The grassland grouse, known as the lesser prairie chicken, saw its numbers drop by 50% last year, and it has lost 80% of its habitat because of oil and gas drilling, ranching, and wind turbines, all kinds of other things, but especially drought. That prompted an aggressive voluntary conservation program with companies and landowners, but recently the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service decided to list the bird as threatened, and that's an important word there, threatened. That's a step below the more stringent endangered status, but several states are already filing lawsuits over the issue. Governor Susana Martinez and U.S. Rep. Steve Pierce blasted the decision. Ms. Martinez said it will decimate economic development and job creation, and Mr. Pierce said it derailed a new model of conservation cooperation among states. So joining us to talk about this head of the Earth Day, we have line regular Laura Sanchez. She's an environmental and civil rights attorney who's also with the New Mexico Green Chamber of Commerce. And joining us again is attorney Sophie Martin, who also teaches marketing communications with UNM's Anderson School of Management. Another line regular is here as well, Tom Garrity of the Garrity Group. And we welcome back to the table Janice Arnold Jones, former state representative. Laura, this move by the federal agency came after some pretty big voluntary conservation efforts, and that took a long time to get to that point. And this has all kinds of seemingly conflicting ideas. Like, you can do this, we'll pay you to do this, but if you don't do this, it's sort of okay. Do, do you know what I mean? It's kind of not a very clear thing. Let's take it from the beginning. What are we trying to do here with this bird? What are we trying to, what are we trying, what's the problem, in other words? What's the fundamental uh, Well, I mean, I mean, this is, you know, first of all, it's, it's a big part of the western United States. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it spans from Montana, Wyoming areas, all the way down. You're talking about habitat. Um, the habitat, yeah. mm -hmm. right. And, and in this case, in the case of New Mexico specifically, mm -hmm. um, it's the eastern part of the state. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I dealt with this issue quite a bit when I was doing transmission work for um, Natural Resources Defense Council. We were dealing with transmission siting and renewable energy siting projects. Where to, where to put lines, power right. lines, where, all Where to the basically thing. put sure. power lines and where to put wind turbines. And mm -hmm. it's a huge issue in eastern New Mexico because we mm -hmm. have a lot of land out there and landowners that want to make better use of their land mm -hmm. that is, they're not able to use for agricultural purposes. So they look to do renewable energy development. And mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a good renewable, you know, rural economic development um, issue. So I got to learn a lot about the lesser prairie chicken. Mm -hmm. And um, the issue is that this kind of development, whether it's oil and gas, whether it's renewable energy, has encroached on the habitat. Mm -hmm. So technically the habitat was there first, mm -hmm. right? The, the prairie chicken was there first. As we have developed around it, it has affected their uh, mating patterns, their, um, you know, their habitat area, their overall existence is threatened. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the issue. And mm -hmm. um, it, it's funny, and we make jokes about it here, because sure. it's, it's amusing, because it is just a little bird. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, what happens is that they get uh, apparently hypnotized um, at some level by the turbines and by the additional action that's happening around the development. Uh -huh. And it affects their mating patterns, right. and that then you know affects their ability to continue to inhabit that area. Mm -hmm. So I think there are some things that can be done on a you know on a planning basis mm -hmm. to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But I think this this move to move it into threatened um, makes it that much more of an important aspect. I think good planning and good mm -hmm. development means mm -hmm. taking into account the potential risks to habitat of all animals, sure. and that then raises the threatened uh, you know lesser prairie chicken to a higher status, mm -hmm. and that's what's making some of the you know other interests that are trying to fight this, right. um, you know, go the route of a, of a lawsuit. Right, interesting. Tom, in your view, as you read this, and it's not a lot of details that we have, is it your sense that the voluntary system was working previously? It, it, you know, folks were doing what they could do, it seemed like. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously Fish and Wildlife didn't feel that it was working, which mm -hmm. is why they made the recommendations that they did. Uh, you know, this is, you know, I don't know if it's as catastrophic. It's definitely an annoyance for industry because right. now uh, it's going to be up to industry to work with landowners mm -hmm. uh, to really create habitats that uh, the lesser prairie chicken can survive in. Mm -hmm. So it's not the end of the world or anything right. like that. Right. But, uh, but, you know, there's a lot of debate. You know, is it mm -hmm. a result of development? Is it a result ah. of drought? A right. combination thereof? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, you know, obviously Fish and Wildlife has made their recommendations. Um, mm -hmm. You know, different oil and gas associations uh, have have said that they're analyzing the impact, uh, which is code for we're going to probably join in on the lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Sophie, I found it interesting, something that Laura was touching on in that um, not just habitat changes, but other, you know, how it affects the predators, how they, how, you know, 
Mm -hmm. You've got these tall things you mentioned. Predators can sit up there and just see where these things are. And just go, it, right. I never would have thought of that. It's That's right. And, and it's important that we recognize, you know, our, our thinking about um, wildlife has changed dramatically over mm -hmm. the centuries. And we've gone from a situation in which we say that particular animal, that doesn't matter, to one where we see that it's the system yeah. that is affected. And right. when you pull one species out of the system, you mm -hmm. can get an overabundance or a loss of an other species, and it's not just the chicken, we're talking about the whole ecosystem out there. Mm -hmm. Economic development concerns, that was some tough language from Mr. Pierce and the Martinez administration about uh, the hit to economic development. What's your sense of that? Well, I, I think it's huge. So mm -hmm. I thought that we were making progress, but the drought has made a huge impact. And since this, the eastern part of the state is dry farming, without water, there is no dry farming. So they're looking for other alternatives. And I'll just throw this out there, but what we're talking about is the sex life of the lesser prairie chicken. They mate in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. And so there was a period in our state where they actually shut down the pump jacks in the middle of the day. Huh. And, mm -hmm. but when you have no other alternative because the drought is impacting you, how do we create the, this balance? I, I agree, mm -hmm. the birds are beautiful, mm -hmm. but people need to eat. They need to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. So I think this is going to be very difficult since I don't see on the horizon that the drought will end in the near future. Yeah, that's a point. But for industry and particularly oil and gas, I, I did see, and we've all seen this, some voluntary efforts. They've taken down some old structures. They're Absolutely. redoing some roads. There, there's some stuff, but that costs money to do. Well, you that, and, and when you take this mm -hmm. quiet period in the middle of the day, and that's what they do, is a quiet period, yeah. that does cost money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so how are we going to find the balance? And, yeah. and maybe what we're going to do is, at least for oil and gas, is they will begin working at 3.30 in the morning and take a midday siesta mm -hmm. and come back and work until mm -hmm. 8 o'clock. It's amazing, this balance of needs, industry's oh. needs, human beings' needs, nature's needs. Uh, lesser prairie chickens needs, how do we, this is what you do all the time, this balance between these needs, this is a classic. It is, and it's, um, you know, it, for the kind of work that I've done for many years, it's mm -hmm. about trying to, um, you know, highlight the, the environmental risk and really take that environmental risk as a value that the business is incorporating into right. their overall business mm -hmm. model. Gotcha. So rather than looking at it as just, you know, you have to put some money aside to fight a lawsuit down the road. Mm -hmm. um, now the model is changing a little bit where you're taking some of that potential money that you would set aside for litigation costs and hiring attorneys to fight your case in court. Mm -hmm. you're, you're taking it and implementing you know, more proactive measures where you're working with the biologist. You're working um, to try to mitigate some of the impacts ahead mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. And that then makes you, I think, more responsible, a more responsible corporation. Mm -hmm. Things like, you know, and, and when we talk about shutting down in the middle of the day, we're not talking about every single day for the entire year. Right. Mm -hmm. It's during their mating uh, period. So okay. they're, you know, mm -hmm. working with biologists and others who have the knowledge about this to try to mitigate that impact um, is a value to the business mm -hmm. because it avoids um, the loss of produ productivity, the potential litigation costs down the road. So I think the fact that it's now threatened means it's highlighted to a different level, gotcha. but it doesn't mean that it's endangered, which endangered um, would then come with many more restrictions. Mm -hmm. And I think there would be a lot of problems. I think there's still an opportunity for business to, to be responsible in incorporating it, those measures. We're time on this one, but it seems to me, uh, you're on something quite right there. If it's not endangered, it could be soon mm -hmm. if these numbers hold. You know what I mean? It could be within a matter of a year or a couple of years, uh, you know, if, if it has 50% drops annually. So right. we'll see what happens. Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. As always, all of us here at New Mexico in Focus appreciate your time and your effort to stay informed and engaged. Catch up on the City Time on social media by searching New Mexico in Focus. And you can find archived interviews and lots of bonus material from our shows on our YouTube channel and at NewMexicoInFocus.org. I'm Gene Grant. We'll see you next week in Focus.